let's check out the uh, <coughs> information. Excuse me. Gesundheit. Let's check out the information of these two. Uh, just, we'll just show the symbol. Right. Faithful Word Baptist Church. Here's the hyperlink. And this is a Cape Town. South Africa. South Africa, right there you see it. This is the address, the profile address. Here's a phone number. That's obviously a U.S.-based phone number. Excuse me. Website. Redirects to Faithful Word Baptist Church. Anderson's Church website. I'm not going to click on it because I don't want to vex myself with this nonsense on his website. But uh, this is interesting. Universal One Church has the exact same address. Cape Town, Western Cape, 7100 South Africa. Same address between the two. Different names. Different phone number. And it goes to universalonechurch.org, which last time I checked, the website doesn't even work. But both mm. are listed as two separate church en entries at the exact same location. See? The location marker isn't moving. The name is moving and changing. The phone number moves. But the address right here remains the same. Interesting. Weird. No <laughs> conspiracy there, I'm sure. Mm. Okay. And here's an even better view, map-wise, of Cape Town, Western Cape, 7100 South Africa. So, just like Bogart said, you know, the Erster River area of uh, Cape Town, you know, mm -hmm. is basically the vicinity of where he wants to build at least one church building. Yep. So, um... Alright, go to the next thing. Now, as far as, uh... And let me just... I want to just type in something here quick. Um, let me first go to Galatians. Just to show you something here, I'm going to put some scripture into this. Um, Galatians chapter 5. And it's all the stuff back and forth. And, oh, we got to, you know, do all these things. And, and you know, the, the government's against us and this government's against us. And they got to pass laws and they got to sign in petitions and all right here Anderson likes to talk about fruit from a ministry being they try to talk about souls saved and churches opening but look at this Galatians 5 22 but the fruit of the Spirit is love joy peace long-suffering gentleness goodness faith meekness temperance against such there is no law you do the true work of Jesus Christ you don't have to worry about oh are the people passing laws and things like that Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying Christians don't get persecuted. I obviously know that they do, but it's just this whole thing of Anderson and all this stuff. It's just, it's wickedness. Um, go ahead. Okay. Here's the entry on uh, how cleric is defined. Okay. And you can look and I'll just, this just is, show you this real quickly here. This is the printed out from books and things. Okay. We aren't going to be able to show this on camera. But you can look this stuff up on your own. Right. It's from the 1907 to 1912 edition of the Catholic Encyclopedia, Volume 4. Starts on page 49. Cleric. Uh, a person who has been legitimately received into the ranks of the clergy. That newspaper article calls him cleric for very good reason. By clergy in the strict sense is meant the entire ecclesiastical hierarchy. Consequently, a cleric is one who belongs in some sense to the hierarchy. For this, it is necessary that he have received at least the tonsure, which is basically a halo of hair around the, the head. Um, they also receive the power of governing the flocks, which power is represented by the keys, a well-known oriental symbol for authority. Probably the best suggested explanation is that from latter portion, uh, it came to mean a particular lot or office assigned to someone, and finally the person himself possessing the lot or office. Cleric Bogart, you know, title-wise. And uh, while cleric in, it, in its strict, strict sense means one who has received the ecclesiastical tonsure, yet in a general sense it is also employed in canon law for all to whom clerical privileges have been extended. Such are the members of religious orders. You know, so both religious institute personnel and non-religious are classified as clerics. Um, for example, monks and nuns, even lay brothers and, and novices, can also, it is also applied to the tertiaries of the mendicant orders. If they be men, however, they must live in community. 
and mil members of military religious orders such as formerly the Knights Templars still exist, just now a York Rite mm -hmm. so Association. And at present, the Teutonic Knights and Knights of Malta rank as clerics. Very interesting. The meaning of the word has been so extended as to include even laics, men or women, who render service to a regular community, such as by begging, provided they wear a clerical dress and reside near the monastery or convent. And so, um, uh, they basically, clerics must wear a costume suited to their state. Roman collar, for, for instance. While the common canon law does not determine in every detail what the dress of clerics should be, yet many and various prescriptions on the subject are found in the canons, the pontifical constitutions, and the decrees of councils. These are ordained that the clerics are not to wear the dress of laymen. They must abstain from gaudy colors unbecoming their state. Um, the wearing of a sotane or cassock on all occasions, even in public, is prescribed for clerics living in Rome, and bishops may command the same in their dioceses. In non-Catholic countries, synods generally prescribe that for public use, the dress of clerics should be such as to distinguish them from laymen, as we've seen from Bogart's photos, that is of black or a sober color, or of a sober color, and that the so-called Roman collar be worn. In private, clergymen are commonly required to wear the sotane. Clerics are forbidden to engage in trade and secular business for the sake of gain, and uh, including gambling and stocks is still illicit for clergymen and um there are stringent laws concerning the relations of clerics with persons of the other sex above all they must avoid associating with those whose moral character causes the least suspicion as we'll see in mm -hmm. not too long with pictures unbecoming amusements are also forbidden to them such as the frequenting of pro improper plays and spectacles the visiting of taverns indulgence in games of chance carrying of arms got some interesting photos on that following the chase etc when the above when in the above amusements however there is no necessary impropriety lawful custom and syn synodal prescriptions may make a participation in them allowable and they are bound to obey their diocese and bishops in all matters determined by the mm -hmm. canon law yeah and so, you know of course that they aren't going to be following these regulations no. just like a lot of the military regulations you know soldiers you know don't go by the book with a lot of this stuff right. so but uh let's continue on here Okay. You want to open the next window? Let me let me just give you one other scripture here real quickly. Let me show you this. I was trying to think of where this was at. Just to show you here real quick. <clears throat> Titus chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. says about sound speech that cannot be condemned. Mm -hmm. But he that is on the... Con no, excuse me. Verse 7 is where I want to start. In all things showing thyself a pattern of good works, in doctrine showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity... Sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. So again, Anderson saying, come, coming out and saying all this stuff, obviously, purposely, just to, just to make you know people mad. It's not right. Mm -hmm. It really isn't right. So, okay. Uh, what are we doing here now? Now let's go to. Well, hold on. Let's go to a new window because now we're going to talk about. Bogart's background and who he is and why he's important okay. to this whole thing. So, um, okay, that's the one right here. Who is cleric Oscar Peter Bogart? Well, this is information on him and this information right here from here to here is going to be talked about later. But uh, Hope Ministries RSA to, Cools River. I'm going to have to zoom in a little bit there because it's pretty small. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, get my pages here. Hope Ministries RSA Cools River. Pardon my mispronounced words. Um, Hope Ministries RSA Cool River. Cools River, mispronounced, misspelled it. somewhere, it had, it, had its first service in West Bank, Cools River on Sunday, 15th of June, 2008, under the leadership of Pastor F.J. Abrahams and his wife, Michelle Abrahams, and it is the first congregation born out of the Ministry of Hope Ministries, RSA, Strandfontaine, time that is under the leadership of Reverend O.P. Bogart, that was born in 2006, in a classroom in Beacon Valley, Mitchell's Plain. 
Okay. Yep. That sentence. And then uh, a ministry such as Hope Helper People Excel RSA is a beacon of hope in this area. And yeah, blah, 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 blah. whatever. Um, scroll down to qualification of leadership and mission statement. Mm -hmm. um, Reverend Oscar Peter Bogart, right there, is a graduate of Calvary Commission Bible School, diploma in systematic Bible theology, and a current undergraduate degree student at UWCMA in Florida, here in the United States. The Reverend O.P. Bogart is chairman of Calvary Commission Bible School Board of Directors. Hmm. And the last sentence, therefore, be it we, the body of the Pentecostal believers, remember what we said earlier about Anderson having Pentecostal charismatic connections? Uh-huh, here we go. Pentecostal believers, recognizing ourselves as part of the church which Christ established, do hereby declare ourselves a sovereign church in the, in the Republic of South Africa in order that we may fulfill our responsibilities spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ to all. Yep. And if you, this is rather telling, prayer and cell groups. Just highlight that for a minute, because that's a spiritual formation type of phrase. Yep. Um, okay, the next tab, Calvary Hope Ministries. Okay, scroll up for a minute. Okay. Um, Calvary Hope Ministries started its first service on 6th of December 2009. Our covenant churches are revival evangelistic ministries with Bishop Clive Samuels. Hmm. There's that word there, Bishop Clive Samuels, and Beacon Hill Ministries with Bishop Livingstone Winston Jacobs. Of course, you know, people say, well, Bishop's a Bible word. It is a Bible word. That's correct. But uh, where does the Bible say that there's this this uh, hierarchical, uniform-wearing bishop thing? Mm -hmm. It's not there. Let's continue. And specific greetings for our senior, um, our senior pastor, and visionary hails from Strandfontein, Cape Town, and he was an associate pastor at Revival Evangelistic Ministries and assistant to the pastor at Beacon Hill Calvary Ministries, meaning assistant to uh, Livingstone Winston Jacobs. Pastor Oscar Peter Bogart is a graduate from Calvary Commission Bible School and a current BTH student at UWMA. I think there's some of the spellings, but um, <clears throat> so um, anyhow, and Scroll down just for a minute. Our staff, uh, Elenda Bogart, that's Oscar's wife. That's a key name to remember here in just a few moments, and I'll, mm -hmm. I'll tell you why. Okay, um, next one is Hope Ministries. This one? Yes, RSA. Go up a little bit. Okay, Hope Ministries RSA, first sentence, started its first service in January 2006 in a classroom at the Alpine Primary School on the Cape Flats in Cape Town, South Africa. The founder of the ministry, Reverend Oscar Peter Bogart, is a graduate of Calvary Commission Bible School and a current student. You can read his titles yeah. there. And was, and was ordained in 2002. Reverend Bogart married Elenda Margaret Plachies, whatever. whatever, on 27th of March of 93. And... Uh, it goes on about his family, but the next sentence is interesting. Sister Bogart, nice title, is working as, as a nurse in the Tigerberg Hospital and uses her days off to work with Reverend Bogart in the poorest of the poor areas on the Cape Flats, namely Tafelzig and Mitchell's Plain. Reverend Bogart is a marriage officer and counselor and uh, that work in an area, yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. Our aim is to build a church in the middle of crime and drug infested ta Tafelzig, whatever. Our church plan is to build two buildings in the middle of two crime hot zones, Tafelzig Mitchell's Plain and West Bank Cool River. And um, they're trying to raise funds for their intended church buildings. And here's right. rather telling, all donations, all donations can be deposited in the account of Hope Ministries RSA. The name of the bank is Ned Bank. Account number stated. Blah, 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 yep, whatever. which is rather telling. So he's yep. not shy about uh, telling who he, he banks with for uh, channeling funds. Our leader at our West Bank Cools River branch is Pastor Frederick Johannes Abrahams and his wife Michelle Abrahams and three children. Um, 
Hope Ministries RSA had its first service under the leadership of Pastor Abrahams on the 15th of June, 2008. So, um... Yep. So, that's... That tells you who's who in uh, Bogart's church building system. And, uh... Okay. Yep. Right there's that. Go to the... Next one. Calvary Commission Bible School. Again, um... The school rector is Bishop Livingstone Winston Jacobs, his degrees. Uh, chairman Board of Directors, Pastor Oscar Peter Bogart, with his academic titles. And uh, Vice Chairman, Pastor Clint Root. Uh, interesting, because these are, these are key words you need to remember for the next uh, tab that we're going to look at here. Go to the LinkedIn tab. This is Oscar Peter Bogart's LinkedIn profile, and you know it's him because senior pastor at Calvary Hope Ministries, as we've seen several times before, Cape Town area of South Africa. Uh, you know, there he shows his, uh, you don't need to see the pro full profile to yeah. know it's him. So it's just another way of saying mm -hmm. it confirms the other resources. Okay. The, uh, that next tab. Um, this is this is another one of the ministries tied to Bogart because um, Calvary Hope Ministries, Health Missions Outreach, and Bogart, Strandfontein, Cape Town, Western Cape. Okay, yep. this is important to also note because we'll see in this next tab these different entries. Okay, scroll up. Well, here we have Hope Ministries RSA, Pastor Oscar Peter Bogart, listed at charismatic.org slash forward slash South Africa. Okay, yep. if you go up. thing for Charismatic and Pentecostal Directory. Hmm. So, you know, Bogart is listed in this thing. Right. And Anderson has videos on how to witness to a Pentecostal. Right. Preaches against them. And, or um. he recommends them. Yeah, really. And, um, so... Hmm. And if you scroll down to Calvary Hope Ministries Health Missions Outreach, right here, Pastor E.M. Bogart, that's rather telling. His wife's name is Elende Elenda M. Bogart. So that's his wife's name with the title of pastor. What does the Bible say about female pastors? Or women yep. doing what? Yep, let's continue. Usurping authority. Hmm. Um. Okay. And uh, next page is Calvary Hope Ministries Pentecostal Church. So again, another confirmation from their own profile that they are Pentecostal affiliated. Mm -hmm. okay. And there he is, right there. Right, and there's his wife. There's his wife. And um, so, yep. So we're not making this up. The next one is. Bogart's personal page. Okay, there is a picture of his Roman collar with the rabbit and the uh, vestments, and netministries.com, which we saw variations of that earlier. Mm -hmm. I am Christian minister of the gospel of of Satan. I mean, <clears throat> his Bogart's version of what he calls Jesus Christ and senior yep. pastor Calvary Hope Ministries. So this confirms the other sources that we've already showed mm -hmm. okay and um and the home page just click on that real quick this is where he's ranting about you know his uh you know views on sodomy in pc terms and again the contact information right here confirms what we've already showed yep okay. so dr longen egger yeah, this is an article, if it'll show up, hopefully, you might have to refresh it. Um, mm. It's getting there. Yeah, really. Notice how earlier you saw that Elenda Bogart works at Tigerberg Hospital? Well, this is the article that proves it. If you, yeah, maximize it a bit. Okay. Here she is. 
Elinda Bogart right there. Mm -hmm. You can see Sister Elinda Bogart. Right, and now Bogart. normally kind of. I wouldn't think much of, of the title Sister being given to all of them. Sister Elinda, Sister Christine, Sister, Sister, you know, Doctor, Doctor, whatever. But when it comes to hospitals and the military medical establishment, the medical establishment was, if you trace it back far enough, ties back to the Vatican and Roman Catholicism. Mm -hmm. So it's rather telling that all the female employees at this hospital are addressed as sister, just like Roman Catholic nuns are addressed as sister, and just like sorority girls are called sister. Right. Rather telling. Um, <clears throat> and, uh... Next. Yep. And then, okay, this is for later on. We gotta finish about Bogart. Okay. This will be... Okay. Um... Next, we're going to talk about Cleric Bogart's apparel, or rather, vestments, as it's officially called. And the first, the first subject is... Where's his... Okay, here's his Twitter account, so that way we can show things. And here's... Reverend Oscar P. Bogart's Twitter account. This information confirms the stuff we've already showed on him. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> the first one is the cassock that he wears. Where is my first entry? Here's what a cassock if I can get that Okay, this is what's called a black Roman style cassock with purple piping for canons and a uh, certain other title in the Catholic Church. Okay, this mm -hmm. is rather interesting to see because um, we're going to go to. Oh, okay, he's wearing a house cassock, and that would be. No, that's not what I wanted. We're going to scroll down to... And of course, in his photos, he doesn't ever show his certain type of ring that he wears out in addition to his marriage ring. But, um, nice blue tie. <laughs> have to wonder if there's a subtle Masonic reference to that or not. But, uh, um, where... I had this written down. 3rd of December, 2016. Twitter is where... I don't know why it keeps doing this. May 20th. Come on, get to the 2016 entries. Okay, here we go. Hmm, interesting how the uh, article on the clergy from the Catholic Encyclopedia mentioned uh, something to do with arms. Very telling photo. Okay, here's part of his cassock, but it's not a very good picture. Another little picture of, of him and, and Anderson. I'll probably Can't just have just to show those. I'll just have to show this, I guess. Um, and okay, here's a close up view of his of his choir cassock or sotain because a cassock doesn't have um, these large cuffs. But this is also called a sotain or a cassock for dress of chaplains of his holiness and canons with stole. This is a close-up view. Okay, as you saw earlier, a uh, regular cassock. This is his Twitter, his tweet from 2015. Here he's in his uh, Roman-style choir cassock for bishops with stole. Stole, the collar, the purple trimming. 
here you have another tweet from his account, Community Prayer Walk on Palm Sunday of 2016. Ankle length, mm -hmm. cassock, purple rabette out around a Roman collar. Okay, here you have him doing a community service, a er, communion service, excuse me, at mass at his church building, which we saw on his Twitter account as we scrolled down. Um, very interesting because if you do a search for black cassock with purple piping, this is what, this is one of the items that shows up and they call it a clergy, a man's clergy robe, black, purple, preacher, yep. purple piping for preacher, you know, and yet this is in similar form, a house cassock for proton notary apostolic clergy. See the similarities? Here is his uh, Easter celebration um, poster from his Twitter account from April 13th of this year, wearing his so tame with purple trimming. Seems he's very fond of showing this off. Children dedication service, also from his Twitter account from February 20th of this year. Again, in his black and purple trimmed so tame with his wife. Career mm. woman slash pastor. Cavalry Hope um, Ministries affiliated to Faithful Word Baptist Church. Hmm. CPT for Cape Town. And, uh, you know, again, he's in his clergy attire, attire or vestments. Yep. From June 3rd of this year. Okay. And you can see the similarities between what he wears and these different forms of cath of cassocks. You know, his is a Latin single-breasted cassock, cassock like it shows. He doesn't have the uh he doesn't have this matching cape in any of his pictures, but you can tell he has this with the large cuffs right there, you know, in purple and purple trimming. And of course, the official uniform for this style is purple colored fabric covered buttons and purple trimming, sure. but it's, you can accentuate it Yeah. however you want to. One. Did we already show this one? Yeah, you already showed okay. that one. Okay, so... Move on um, to the next folder. Um, here we have... Where? There we go. Okay. Here is a picture of a compassionate Christ pectoral cross gold plate Byzantium style. Okay. And here we have Pastor Bogart in his uh, photo showing his pectoral cross, <coughs> Latin style pectoral cross with chain and um, in, in a photo. And here we have another photo of, of him for his political affiliation. I am voting the straight party. <laughs> yep. You know, with his pectoral cross in the photo. No shame in it, just, yeah, I'm wearing my pectoral cross. <laughs> you know, and what's significant about the sotane or the cassock with cuffs is this. Um, <clears throat> according to the Catholic Picture Dictionary, okay, page 30. You have cassock, a long-skirted, close-fitting black garment worn by clerics and priests. And sissies. Also called sotane. Yeah. Then... I mean, it's all Book of Acts, you know? It's, it's there, oh, right there. They wore sure. robes all the time. Sure. But... Sure. Of course. Keep it going. Okay. Um, next, we have to talk about his cassock. Um... Where does this this idea of his black cassock with purple trimming come from? Well, there is a site that uh, I'll just go to the site real quick because I have it printed out. And uh, 
but I'll, I'm gonna shut your site, can't type, dot com forward slash clerical address. Now this article is, is written by a Catholic STL, a licentiate of sacred theology, essentially. So a master's mm -hmm. degree holder or a master's degree student, you know, with a Catholic status in academia. If we scroll down to, so this is not just some random article about this stuff. Dress of chaplains of his holiness. Choir dress, black wool cassock trimmed in purple silk. What did we see earlier about a Bogart's cassock? Granted, you know, he's he doesn't have these others in his photos, but black cassock trimmed in purple silk. PN dress, black wool cassock trimmed in purple silk. You know, certain manufacturers for cassocks will give you different options for accents and how you want your, your uniforms as long as it's within the allowable regulation of your of your locality or diocese. But uh, if we go down to dress of canons, uh, all other canons, unless they were bishops, now wear as choir dress. A black or gray wool mozetta, which he doesn't have, trimmed in purple silk, or a purple wool mozetta, um, trimmed in purple silk, in purple silk, if explicitly allowed for the chapter by the diocese and bishop over an unpleated surplus and the choir cassock to which they are entitled. Um, <clears throat> this choir dress is used only when they are in the cathedral slash, slash collegial church or when accompanying the bishop for all of their forms of dress and for the remainder of the choir dress, they wear what is proper to their rank. Um, so, you know, canons can also wear black cassocks with purple silk trimming, just like uh, chaplains of His Holiness do. So yeah. uh, kind of gives a new meaning to what he's wearing. Um, and further on down in this article, the notes are very specific in this. The choir cassock now differs. You're going to have to go down because you're up. Let me, what, let me do it here. Sorry. Right here. The choir cassock now differs. This is a uh, note, source reference note. Um, now differs in form in that the, it has cuffs of the material and color of the trimming. That's what I was trying to say earlier. Yeah. So the whole point is, it's you know, she gets really detailed into a lot of this stuff. She does her research, you know, to everybody out there. She isn't just light with her research and things like that. She's showing the, the stuff. You know, we don't have to read all this stuff right. simply because it's just, it's there. And you okay? can read on note 13 about the trimming of the cassock. And yeah. why I was trying to point that out about his uniform. Yep. His vestments, excuse me. And uh, if you go up, go down to note 17, I just want to make a quick mention. You can read about the ordinary pectoral cross. That is what he is wearing. His pectoral cross is called ordinary because it's suspended from a chain of the same color of the pectoral cross. So you can right. read that note in, in its entirety to understand more about it. Yep. And um, and so, what is uh? Should I should I read? I have references on clerical costume. No. And we, we, we've proved stole. That. Okay. We proved it. I mean, it, it's just if somebody's not convinced by now, we're not going to be able to convince okay. them even if we read everything. Okay. So yeah, let's move on um, to the next section here. And um, we talked about the pectoral cross. The doctor, go over to the folder there, various uniforms. And Doctor Divinity, Divinity, excuse me, Divinity clergy pulpit robe. And uh, okay. I'll just show you this. This is. A clerical robe and then you can see some similarities with what Bogart wears this is a close-up of the doctor of divinity pulpit robe clergy pulpit robe here's a side view of it 
Now keep the keep these this picture and the previous one of the close-up view in mind very clearly because what we're about to show you with Bogart's vestments is very similar to this. Yep. Here is faculty custom regalia, otherwise otherwise known as commencement attire, right. commencement regalia in academia, and colleges Bogart. and universities. And here is Bogart's clergy pulpit robe. It looks very similar to what we already saw earlier. And this is him again in a pulpit robe with a Neil Pinar, which is who he ordained, according to his Twitter profile, as yep. we'll see. There's the vestments just right. one more time. See it? Mm-hmm. Right there. You can see the similarities okay. between a clergy pulpit robe and academia faculty robes. Yep. They're just slightly tweaked. The three scarlet um, chevrons on his on his clergy pulpit robe are a academic regalia symbol meaning doctoral level. Yep. And uh, okay, so we showed that. Do I have page five? Okay. And uh, and yep. Okay. This one's now the cope. This is another part of bishop attire, the cope. Here's a cope manufacturer from Poland. I thought this was rather telling because it's similar to what you'll see in a moment. This is the back side of the cope, Jesuit symbol obviously, clasp on the cope, and this is what distinguishes it from a um, from a cape or a uh, mm -hmm. I think that's what the other thing is. And this is the another view of copes back and front. Okay. And they can have sleeves. So it's not just they don't have sleeves. They do. They can have sleeves. Um, this is the clasp of the cope, you know, and obviously it has sleeves for better movement. Um, you can read about it in the Catholic Encyclopedia. But that's the front of his cope. His assistant, Neil Pinar, <coughs> if I'm saying it correctly, is also wearing the exact same cope as what you just saw on Bogart. This is Bogart ordaining Bishop Mark Page. And this is the back of the cope. Remember, we mm -hmm. saw the back being very, this is a stylized back to this or this. There's very little difference between the styles of what yep. Bogart and Mark Page, Bishop Mark Page wear. And this is another style with a clasp. So, you know, these are all copes with clasps. Just to show you there is a similarity between what Mark Page is wearing and what uh, Bogart also has been wearing. Right there. Front view. Yep. So, um... <clears throat> And you can look it up in the in the Catholic Encyclopedia. But just to clarify what a cope is used for, we'll go to uh, page 43 in the Catholic Picture Dictionary from before. A cope is a large cloak in the shape of a half circle, usually made of silk, reaching from the shoulders to the feet of the priest. It is worn at benediction, vespers, absolution of the dead, and in processions, also called pluvial. So... Um, and again, you can see here the Roman collar. Right. So With the rabbit, because you see a Roman collar, you know that there's going to be a rabbit include. Rabat. Maybe I'm mispronouncing it. Whatever. Um, next we have... Get rid of those. Next we have the uh, clergy shirts. Okay. This is Bogart wearing his purple clergy shirt. Okay. Roman collar. This is obviously a type of rabat because it's it's attached to the Roman collar. And here we have notice this the way the shirt is made right here mm -hmm. is very similar to this guy's shirt and his shirt and also his shirt. And of course ironically he's wearing a pectoral cross, Latin style pectoral cross, Roman collar. So these are all pictures to show the similarity of what you've seen and Bogart's 
photo. Okay. Yep. Roman collar with uh, different styles of clergy vestments. Okay. Now we have Roman collar. Okay. Um, this is from his Facebook page. Here you can see clearly the Roman collar, the black robot with it, you know, and this is called Kenty or Kent African Heritage Trim, you know, and you can get this stylized to your mm -hmm. specific colors or whatever if you feel like it. Instead of the regular Roman collar with the black robot and the uniform of Vatican Ambassador to South Africa Archbishop Peter Wells is just wearing your generalized uh, Roman collar with black rabat and other vestment attire. And here you have another picture of Bogart showing off his Roman collar uniform and talking to somebody during a marriage ceremony. Here you have Bogart showing off his Roman collar again, vestment, marrying this guy and his wife there in South Africa. Again, the Kent African Heritage Trim. Mm -hmm. Here you have Reverend O.P. Bogart showing off his Roman collar with a, you know, navy blue looking shirt. And uh, nice little propaganda there of the King James Bible, you know, and another clergyman wearing a Roman collar, just like Bogart. See the similarity? Uh, here he's wearing his Roman collar during the marriage ceremony or signing of the book because yeah. that's what he said he's authorized to do um, so and there's a different there's a same one but a different snapshot right. so he has no problem showing off his Roman collar which I find it to be rather similar to Archbishop Peter Wells's mm -hmm. Roman collar and vestments chosen vestments okay and this is just you can look this up and find out that this is if you look up kenty trim bishop cassock you'll find examples like this with the same style of cross as what you've seen in bogart's attire from before yep okay B batone cross um from his Twitter, March 14th of 2016, he's showing the Batone cross symbol on his his uh, vestments, his clergy robe. Okay, you can see it close up very clearly um, at his church, Hope Ministries. And here you have another view of his Batone cross symbol on his uh, on the stole of his sotain because of the large cuffs right here, and uh, at a service at his church. You know, this is also found on his Twitter account. Yep. And uh, if you want to look up a little bit about the Botone Cross, you can find it in the Catholic Encyclopedia, Volume 4 of 1907-1912. It's uh, on the second to last page. Um, but the Botone Cross is a Latin type of cross in case you didn't know. And uh, so I find that rather telling. If he's just a regular, you know, pastor, why is he wearing all these different Catholic symbols and outfits, or rather vestments, excuse me. And last but not least, um, his activities. He, uh, a picture of him showing the article that he will build Anderson's church. <laughs> How telling. Um, you saw the yeah, family we photos. Yeah, through all that stuff again. Just because of the sake of time here. It's good There's thing. this thing right here. Here you have his tweet from December 3rd of 2016 showing him visiting the Queen in London. Well, what's significant about that? Here you have Queen Elizabeth II in London wearing the Order of the Garter attire. Okay, from what I know off the top of my head, she has at least three 
National Shriner and Royal Order affiliations. Probably more, but three I can name off the top of my head. This is Knight of Malta. Remember what the article said in the encyclopedia, Catholic Encyclopedia? Knights of Malta also is classified under the clergy profile. <coughs> Interesting. Yep. And here she is in her Diamond Jubilee attire, um, 1948, and then 2012 from the Royal Order of Sartorial Splendor. That's a national shrine, Shriner affiliated mm -hmm. uh, organization that she's sure. a member of, which I find his visit to her in London, his tweet just, about that to be rather telling. Just to show a couple more pictures here of him and Anderson together, you know, oh. sitting there. Playing the piano. Playing the piano at Anderson Hanks Cult Building. There they are out spreading their heresy. Yep. To the poor native people down in Arizona. <clears throat> And there's so much stuff here. There's I mean, something weird about... Go to that one, South Africa's Anderson Snake supporter. There's something weird about that sign in the back. I don't know what that is. I don't know if that means Christian Brothers or something, I have but no it's idea. something weird. Um, Whatever. You know, fun. there's... there's We can't go off on all these other issues. And he's appearing on television. <laughs> according to his Twitter account. So, you know... Um, oh, and the film recording. Let me find the film recording. Okay. Because that's rather telling. We mentioned that earlier, and uh, that's rather telling. Film recording from Bogart's Twitter account. Here he is posing with Anderson in the filming studio. You have to wonder which documentary or propaganda films, you know, he was advising Anderson on because. Uh, Something was going on for him to tweet that and take a picture. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I just find it very, very telling. Go back to the previous page there. I wanted to show And here's, one. did we show this go, yet? Go ahead. Here's another photo. Anderson right there being promoted by Calvary Hope Ministries for a special soul winning marathon. Mm -hmm. You know, from Bogart's own Twitter account. From this year. Yep. So go back to the other page. The uh, activities. Okay. That one. What's this? This is uh, Bogart's ecumenical doings because he yoked up with a Southern Hills Baptist church uh, from, I don't know where, I guess a local place. Huh. You know. <coughs> so it goes this okay. is from 2013 so he's been no. ecumenical with the Baptists for years and um but okay anyways. we already and uh so that's pretty much here's the Bogart and Anderson crew you know they're in Cape Town from February of this year and uh Another picture of Bogart at Anderson's church in 2016. And, uh, I think that pretty much covers it for yeah. the pictures. The okay. last, the last thing is the, um, information on Livingstone Winston Jacobs. Dr. Jacobs and uh, this this guy here's a picture of him um, this is Bogart obviously and this is Dr. Livingstone Winston Jacobs Jacobs is in official academic regalia or academic dress as it's also called and what his uniform is is symbolizing his specific degree program because of the three chevrons right here, scarlet colored, of course, um, scarlet ribbon, scarlet hood, scarlet stole, scarlet hood, scarlet mm -hmm. chevrons. This means the three chevrons symbolize PhD level. Doctor of divinity also includes ministry, uh, religion, sacred theology, and divinity. And, uh, mm -hmm. and, um, Divinity, Ministry, Religion, and Sacred Theology, and also 
this, this is the same color for canon law, which is very telling. And um, so, but look at the, the hand signal here, okay? See how this is not a normal handshake sign. This is a uh, hidden meaning behind what they're doing here. And um, so how about we look at, this is a past grip of a Master Mason, Tubal Cain. Okay, the thumb is, is extended to reach to the third, to the fourth finger, okay? Or Jaken, real grip of a fellow handcraft, handshake, looks similar to uh, the handshake between Jacobs and Bogart. Let's show it again. And uh, here's the picture again. It is kind of peculiar why they're, you know, um, standing there shaking hands that way. Mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe not Masonic, but to me it's like, eh, yeah, to questionable. Wonder. It's a posed picture, so it's kind of weird. But oh, nuts. What did I just do? Okay. I was trying to get back to that picture and it didn't want me to. Okay. So we've, co we've covered that. Go to the so, next thing, please. Okay. Now, his background, the profile of this guy is uh Beacon Hill Calvary Ministries. This is the this is the profile of Jacobs. Okay, Bishop just Jacobs. Get, get through this and, quickly because we, we And he uh the assembly known as Beacon Hill Calvary Ministries has since released two mis missionaries, ten pastors to the ministry and five churches planted, pioneered and established without its ministry. And uh, sounds like a military evaluation report, but congregation inaugurated and ordained Jacobs to bishop on 20th of October 2002. The inauguration uh, was appreciated by followers and fellow clergymen. Um, <clears throat> bishop Jacobs has founded the International Assemblies of God of Western Cape South Africa, which is the mother church, as you'll see. From a congregation he pioneered and established in Mitchell, Mitchell's Plain from 1978. Since then, as Mother Church, Mother Church, have given birth to various congregations in Western Cape and the Eastern Cape. All these different names listed right here. Christian yep. Revival Center, Family Enrichment Center, Erster River, Alpha and Omega Ministries, Delft, Cornerstone of Faith Ministries, Fountain of Joy Ministries, Commission Assemblies, Bayview Strandfontein under leadership Pastor Stanley and Pastor Stanley, and this one, <clears throat> seven, Pope Ministries RSA, Tafelzig, Beacon Valley, Strandfontein under leadership of Pastor O.P. Bogart, Eastern Cape, and the other ones. The Mother Church was also sending out other missionaries yep. to different places, but this is rather telling. So... Jacobs gave birth to Pastor Bogart. Huh. Interesting. And, uh, of course, it won't let me show the whole thing out that, without this, but it says, Livingstone Winston Jacobs, Bishop at Beacon Hill Calvary Ministries International, South Africa. Bishop, Beacon Hill Calvary Ministries International. Yep. Founder and visionary of the ministry. Calvary Commission Bible School served as principal and lecturer in systematic Bible theology. Okay. Um, why does he call himself Bishop? If we look at his photo, he's wearing a Roman collar with African heritage trim and other clerical vestments famous of the clergy and what they wear. So, here we have... It'll... Okay. International Assemblies of God. This is his mother church that he founded. And uh, how ironic. A, uh, a white leader, you know, being all chummy with this uh, local South African leader. He, you know, is mentoring him, essentially. And uh, that's the website of their international organization that Jacobs founded the mother church and um, it's assemblies of God Pentecostal 
a cooperative fellowship of Pentecostal spirit baptized saints from local Pentecostal assemblies of like precious faith throughout the Republic of South Africa. So Pentecostal and uh, charismatic. Yep. And um, here you can look through Bogart's Twitter account for more pictures, but um, some a few points to note from this article which is actually written by what I believe to be a Jesuit trained person because uh, Ad Majorium De Glorium There you go. Jesuit motto right there. For the greater glory of God. <clears throat> um, if I can get my notes here. You can just, you're just going to make the point here. Let me find. Okay, it's right here. Uh, the office of the episcopate itself that is of a bishop so winston jacobs calls himself bishop and you know the episcopate is a roman catholic mm -hmm. office for what he's talking about and uh so basically according to his catholic mother church jacobs um unites such as, such was the origin of the episcopate um, to keep them united to the successor of the Blessed Apostle Peter, who is our Pope. So, you know, the Pope is a type of bishop. And uh, this symbolizes the... Where is it? This symbolizes the union of the ministry of the di diaconate and the priesthood in the person of the bishop, who represents the completion of holy orders, which explains why bishops wear priestly priest garments or vestments and specifically bishop vestments and what they wear for different purposes. Cardinals and popes are not separate orders, but they are just different types of bishops. So that's what a cardinal means. It's just a type of bishop. And um, you can look at the other website for information on the attire of bishops and whatnot, but it's rather telling that Winston Jacobs, he only put out two pictures that I could find through research of what he of his vestments and what he looks like and what he's about so um, <clears throat> and what I find to be rather telling is this Assemblies of God Gospel Crusade CA movement from 1961 this is on his International Assemblies of God photo page I find that telling because Bogart uses the term crusade in the newspaper articles we discussed earlier. Anderson uses the same term to describe what he's doing as far as soul witnessing overseas. And, um, and the Catholics use it. Yes. Yep. So I find that very telling. Okay, and Wells. this last, the, this, okay, this is Pentecostal uh, charismatic directory again to show his entry. He has... <coughs> Winston Jacobs has his own <clears throat> entry on this. Beacon Hill, right there. Bishop Livingstone Winston Jacobs, right there. Mm -hmm. And this is telling. We scroll down a little bit. Covenant Prayer... Did I go past it? No. Okay. Covenant Prayer Episcopal Church. If there's no connection with the Episcopal Church denomination, why is it listed in a uh, charismatic Pentecostal directory of churches? I find that very telling. A uh, Episcopalian bishop is listed alongside other Pente Pentecostal and charismatic church building pastors. I find that very interesting. Yep. And there's a Church of Christ, another thing, in the Charismatic and Pentecostal Director of South Africa. Yep. So, um, I think that pretty much ends it. I have several references about holy orders and how the holy orders describe the vestments of priests and bishops. And that's why I touch base on the specific items of Bogart and... Winston Jacobs vestments because it's outlined in the Catholic encyclopedia. It's described in detail. 
and it's also described how uh, clergymen are able to weasel out of punishment if they're found guilty of wrongdoing. Yep. And how they're transferred it's... to another duty station if uh, the Pope says that they should be transferred to another duty station. I mean, location. For public good image. Yep. That's all you have? As far as I can tell, yep. Okay. Well, that was a lot of information, and believe me, there's still a whole lot more that she read through and everything. Um, she's a very, very thorough researcher. and uh, Just to show you my the stack of, of research the Lord helped me do on this, um, here's a picture of bishop versus priest vestments in simplified form, which you can find yourself if you want to. And uh, I have all the sources printed out that uh, have been used for the study, and a lot of them I couldn't get to because of time constraints, but if you want to know my sources, I'll, uh, I'll write them up for you. I was just uh, found this interesting. It's not even King James down there. Right. So it's like, <laughs> whatever. You know, it just... Yeah. I mean, you can just keep going on and on and on about this stupid nonsense and all these connections and everything else. And, uh, you know, but the whole thing is... I think, again, this is a very telling picture right here. Let no man deceive you. These people are deceivers, brethren. Uh, Anderson and his cronies and, and all these goons and everything else, they're lying to you. They're deceiving you. Mm -hmm. It's totally hypocritical. Anderson comes out and preaches against Pentecostalism, but yet yokes up with this guy. And promotes him. And, and yeah, it's just like, whatever. Um, this is a very detailed study because, you know, my wife is the one to put this thing together. Uh, I knew a little bit about it, but you know, I just said, you know what, you just whatever Lord shows you. So um, she picked out the best research, the best stuff, pointing all this stuff together, um, and she showed me a lot of it. And I was like, honey, this is going to be a lot, but you know what? Um, it's also to educate you about the thing of the vestments and the things of the unscriptural stuff that the Catholic Church has there people where they're slaves where is really the whole thing mm -hmm. um and that's you know that's catholic teaching too by the way the the clergy and things like that they are servants they are slaves of the hierarchy right so i'm not being you know racist or mean or whatever else so um that's gonna be it for this video right yep okay i think i touched base so, on everything just just a, a crazy all this stuff and again it ties right back to bible prophecy it ties back to the thing of, um, you know, the Roman Catholic Church system is establishing, very busy establishing state churches. Um, they're, they use somebody like Anderson to come out and make him look like he's rogue and he's saying all these crazy things. They'll even get a higher trained guy like this Bogart to come out and do the same thing. Uh, to set up, well, we have to have we have to have some regulations. Otherwise, it can lead to hate, and it can lead to people getting killed, and whatever. So we have to regulate somewhat in things. And these guys, they'll come out, they'll say all this inflammatory stuff, and yet they'll never go to prison. They'll never get kicked off YouTube. They'll never get kicked off, you know, things like this. They oh, they've been banned from certain countries. Please, please, and and again, the military works hand in hand with the Vatican whatever <laughs> you know if i mean if you're not convinced by now there's nothing really we can do for you you know right. so that's, just go ahead i just want to say that uh to all the papists watching this video and i know you're watching it uh don't try and take down your little uh websites that that uh uh criminalize bogart and and his uh female pastor and his mentor, Winston Jacobs and Anderson, you know, don't try and take your stuff down because um, you can moan and groan about it, but we have everything printed out and we have multiple layers of copies of your stuff. So you take it down, you uh, misplace it or mistitle it someplace else, you're mm -hmm. just making yourselves look bad. Yep. So that is going to be it. Uh... Please stay away from Stephen Anderson. Yes. Um, unless it's to expose him. <laughs> right.
But uh, and and if you're still going to some kind of Baptist church or something for for crying out loud, get out of the thing. It's yoked up with all this stuff. You know, it's just ridiculous. So that is going to be it. Thank you very much for watching.